and you got just a little bit missing, it's the moon room. When it's all going up there, that's the conclusion. Mine's starting to go right here. That's the You're good. Starting You're to good. go up a little bit. You're good. Hey, uh, push it down a little bit. And Stop. I got rid of what? Shut up. You know what? I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Are you over or under 45? Oh, wow. Somebody else got a phone. Okay. You're over 45. You still got a full head of hair. I started shaving my head when I was 25 and probably two years too late. So shut your mouth. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same boat. Yeah, I got a little, uh, I got a little, uh, I'm starting to get the blue, I'm starting to get it's the rest. Re- it's receding a millimeter. I'm starting to get the bad signal. No, well, you're not. I three hairs this week. Yeah. No, you're not. I got that distinguished gray coming in with my black hair. Oh, my hair now looks like the McDonald's arches. Get out of here. What's up, everybody? It's time for another episode of the Prodigal Sons Podcast. Tonight's topic, American Cheese, Christians, part two. That's my line, man. (laughs) Seeking the true spirit of worship in daily lives. Seeking truth. Today's date is June 22nd, 2021. Show number is 66 episodes. We have date line? Date? Today's date? Well, I think it'd be nice when people are looking back at our show... And wondering how it ended so spectacularly, like, imploded. They're going to go, I wonder what they were doing on June 22nd, 2021. And this is what we're doing. American Cheese Christians, part two. Because you weren't here for part two. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Giuseppe's Auto Repair and Italian Bakery. If you need your Lancia Integrale repaired and a couple of... Uh, Garlic nuts. Italian cookies or cannolis. cannolis. Go see, go see old man Giuseppe at Giuseppe's Auto Repair and Italian Bakery. Honestly, I don't think Giuseppe speaks English that well. He didn't really know what he was doing. I think he thought he was ordering exhaust pipes when he gave us money. But, you know, thanks, Giuseppe. Yeah, we appreciate it. So, with that, I'm going to go around the room. And we got Sean Conner. Hey, how are you? Elijah Griffin. Hi, everybody. I'm always nice, low, and not talking that loud. But here I am. Happy to see you all. God bless you. Jesus loves you. We got Ben Simmons. Oh, I mean, Tom Rivera. No, it's perfect, because just like in the game, he's not there. He disappeared. I'm not really sure. I'm sorry. Ben Simmons? Simmons. Let me show you Ben Simmons at the three-point line. (laughs) You hear all the kids? Shoot it, Ben. Shoot it. (laughs) All right. Don't make fun of a mental. And the, he doesn't have to be at the, at the three point line to do that. That's right. That's he right. could be at the foul line and do that. <laughs> and he, and he dumped it off. That's the one I was just thinking of. He just Good. dumped it off. Terrible. I'm sorry, he went off track. I'm sorry. Why have I died? It's cool. Yes. Yeah, we got the best producer in the podcast, Katie. Sarah B. Hey, guys. Hey, that didn't sound enthusiastic. The smile. It's usually hey yo, isn't it? Hey. It yeah. is. I it is typically hey yo. I was trying to switch it up. I missed that. the hey yo. Yeah, I missed the hey yo. Hey yo is, 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 is hey true. Yo. So, he so, so let's try that, that again. Time. Let's try that again. Hey could you, could you introduce Sarah again? And we got the best producer in the podcast game, Sarah Beecher. Hi yo. Yeah, it, it is. is. And as always, I'm that other guy. All right. Oh, uh, hi, son. Oh. Trying to. We can't. So many complaints. Our shows have been three hours long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Gotcha. Uh, what else are we doing? That's it. I got the sponsor. I got the intro. Why don't you start? What are we doing? What are we talking about today? What are we talking about? We're talking about seeking. We're talking about seeking truth today. We're talking about Christians and how they're so cheesy. But we got some other stuff to get to first. Some other cheesy stuff to get to. Hmm. Tom's back. Tom's back. Yeah. Tom's back. Uh, uh-uh. don't, don't, don't. Do it. We'll just go right to it. If uh, if Sean and I, Sean and you, if Sean and I were coffee, what kind of coffee do you think we'd be? I think I'd be a glass of half and half. A glass of half and half coffee. That's, that's coffee convention. I think I think it'd be coffee. <laughs> <Yeah. convention. laughs> I think Sean and I are a full glass of half and half with just a 
just a little splash. I'm straight so, mocha, bro. Elijah's mocha. <laughs> Eliza is saying that he is mocha. When Tom left a couple of weeks ago, what kind of coffee would you say he was? Coffee con leche. And is he pushing full hazelnut right now? Pushing full hazelnut. I'm just saying. Where did you go? <laughs> he went to the equator. <laughs> Were you on a missions trip to like the sun? Yeah, you came camp, back? I'm really, like right <laughs> on the surface of the sun. <laughs> Did you pay for that thing? That's the first thing I said when I saw Tom. I said, that is not a that is not a New Jersey shore tan. You pay for that. It's that lotion right there. That's the Cape May sun, man. That's the Cape May sun. That's that Cape May sun. That's, Cape May sun. That's how bright the light of Jesus was. Yeah, amen. Amen. Uh, there it is. That song was on. There it is. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I brought it up because I'm jealous. I, I can't tell. Like that. I have paid for for a uh, tanning booth for an entire summer once, and uh, nothing happened. On oh, natural row. They gave me my money back. On oh, natural row. <laughs> they gave you. Yeah. Here. They Here's gave me. Extra. They, they gave, gave me my money back. See, oh, I think wow. it bounced. Sorry. <laughs> when I went in the tanning booth, it actually bounced back and broke the machine. And they <laughs> they paid me not to come back. They should have never let you in, though. That's the thing. Is that is that true? That's why they gave you the money back. Because they they're like we should have never let. Said, oh, I'm sorry, man. The machine. Both of these machines must be broken. Somebody else steps out looking all golden. He came out looking at his shirt like a McDonald's French Just fry golden. Red. <laughs> Did you say my look like a... Never mind. Uh, in serious news, I did want to mention this week that uh, we just we just had our first official federal holiday, Juneteenth. Yes, we did, and yeah. I celebrated. You know what? Um, I was that was pretty cool to see that that became an official holiday. Um, one thing that I heard recently uh, in actually uh, Sky Jatani's book. About oh I'm sorry no it wasn't Sky Chitani I'm trying to remember who wrote the book anyway it's called The Color of Compromise by Jamar Chisby I read in his book that he said American Christians or Christians in general we believe that the only way to uh, real reconciliation is uh, asking for forgiveness and understanding what we've done and to be able to move towards that road of redemption so, but in this particular when it comes to slavery. We don't want to do that. We just want to pretend like nothing ever happened, and we're moving forward. No, nope, didn't happen, or it did happen, but yeah, we're, I'm, we weren't around, and whatever. You know, we're just going to move forward. We're going to move forward. But I think it, we have gone through a time in our in our culture where we're understanding what happened, and you know, and asking for forgiveness for whatever part we play in it or played in it um, for any continuation. And now we're celebrating Juneteenth. I like it. I like it a lot. What do you guys think? I like it. I'm appreciative of it. I'm glad to see things are being acknowledged. Um, and this is something that, now that it's a national holiday, I feel as though it's something that's going to have to be taught in school because for a lot of times, our textbooks did not give us the, <clears throat> you know, the history <laughs> of our, of our, you know, yeah. of our people. So. Yeah, we, this is this is American history and uh, they are slaves and okay, this right. is Ameri it's like what? Wait, what? Two pages of slavery. Like, <laughs> you got two oh, pages? Wow, two pages. <laughs> I don't saying. think I had two paragraphs in my history. Two sentences. <laughs> yeah, there was slavery and it was a thing, and I don't know. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I like what you said about you know the, the farmers. <laughs> okay. It's so true. And like like the, we did picture of like the. the the colonial farmers and everything, right. and they're all like white landowners, and it's like, uh, excuse me, uh, farmers are people who farm the land, right? <laughs> Where's the pictures of that? <laughs> they even said it in the Hamilton. When you said keep ranting, we know who's really doing the planting. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of rant, I do have one. Of yes, those. that was my yes, segue. That that's a good segue. segue. Hold on, let me get ready. Let me just get ready for this. Uh, the back breaks for this one, brother. Oh, okay. You should stand up and stretch. Do we want to go straight to the ramp? Oh, was he standing up? Might as well. It was, yeah. really good well. it was a good segue. It's, it's there. It's there. It's there. I, I don't want to waste the segue. I was going to wait one more thing, but... Hmm. <laughs> We're bringing the rant back, baby. This rant has been in the hopper for two weeks. It's just been marinating. Straight up a decker. 
I'm excited. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> this rant has... Oh, I think it's ready. I think it's ready. Tom knows that there's a rant coming his way, but he has no idea what it is. Here we go. Thomas. David. How you doing, buddy? Good. So here's the deal. In every marriage, once in a while, there's an argument. Correct? Can I get an amen? Amen. Okay. Every marriage. Every marriage. My marriage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. We still argue mm -hmm. once in a while. Do you know how rare it is that there is an argument where one person takes 99% of the blame? You know how rare that is when one person... I mean, in your marriage, how many times has it been completely one person's fault in an argument? I mean, there has been. There has. I mean, but it's so rare. Usually there's an argument, but back and forth. Da, 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 da. I'm sorry, baby, I did this. No, it's okay, baby, it's okay, I did this. So Lisa and I had an argument a couple of weeks ago. Not the worst argument we've ever had, but not the, you know, not the easiest argument we ever had either. And at the end, Lisa said, you know what? I'm going to take all the responsibility. I did something I shouldn't have done. And I apologize. And, you know, I hope you forgive me. I said, of course. And she said, of course. But, there it comes. But I bought these books that I want you to read. <coughs> Because I think it'll help our marriage. I bought the book. Is that book? The Five, Love, the Five Languages. Love Languages. Because I remember the episode where Tom Rivera said that it was the best book they ever read for their relationship. And it helped their relationship. We had an argument. I would just like to break this down. We had an argument in which my wife said it was her fault. that I, did, I didn't perpetuate the argument. I didn't cause the argument. It was her fault. She did something wrong and she apologized. But then, but then, but then, but then, but I got homework for an argument because of you. There was an argument that wasn't my fault and then I had to read a book. And you're glad you read it. I'm so mad at you. So mad at you. What's your love language, Dave? My love language is I'm gonna beat the crap out of Tom. <laughs> my love language is to be. I think I can run him. I think I can outrun him. Not to. Not to <laughs> ooh, some, that's me. Somebody tripped this guy over the door. Not to, not to, not to ruin. Not to ruin your rant. I seen this guy what? carry like two tons. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to offend you if you keep talking. Sorry. Okay. What he basically said was he read that book before. So when he got into the next relationship, he knew what he was getting into and what type of person he wanted to be for his mate. Is that what he said? That's what he said. So I read the book before Claire, but 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 I mean, it, it's a book. It, it's a book that can help everyone. It really is. The same the book. The Five Love Languages. I want to make sure. I yeah, I knew that. <laughs> Sean wants no help in that department. Sean, be careful though. You might meet the love of your life and end up getting married. And 14 years later, so she might cause an start an argument that she says is entirely her fault, but then she might give you homework. I got a I'm question about that. Did you? You did, might have to read it. Did you record it, it, her it, saying, No. It was my fault. No. Or I was and I'm pretty it. sure by the time we get home and she's listened to this, it's going to be all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell her this was coming, so but I don't think it's gonna help things. I still think I'm in trouble. I, I got a question for you though. Yeah. Are you gonna read it? I already started. Because you know what? I know how to eat my vegetables. It's pretty good. Wow. The vegetables are good for you though. I know how to eat my vegetables. They just this nose and smother them with cheese and bacon bits. Uh, Right? We can't we can't do that because that's what this show is about. Like we can't process. Something. Oh, that would have been a good transition. That is crap. Everybody forget you heard that. We'll do that next time. Bring it back again. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we should do a game. Yeah, we got five minutes. I think we should do a game. Sean, you ready to do that game? Am I doing the game? I thought you were doing the game. Oh, I oh my bad. We're earlier than we thought we'd be, so let's throw a game up there. 
think I think I think whenever Sarah jumps on the mic, she should just automatically say, "Hello, hello." <laughs> Everybody say. You're not an Animal Crossing character. Okay. Okay, so this is a Father's Day. Would you rather? This is Ooh. a pretty simple one. It would have to be. It's for Father's Day. It needs to be pretty so much. Should only be one question. Look, 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 I just looked up and balled his fist like you better. Not, look at it. Look at what? Nothing, son. You're amazing. Okay. Amazing. Here we go. Would you rather football or basketball? Football. Football. To play or watch? Either. Either. Basketball. Either. He's mad at basketball right now. No, it's not that. It's just that I would basketball. That was my first basketball. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. Ooh, nice. Uh, sneakers or boots? Sneakers. sneakers. Really? All of you? Interesting. Depends on what you're doing, but it is no, sneakers. No, fine. In, no, general. Not, not in general. Not true. General football. Not true. Unless you're from New York, it's Tim's all day. I, if I'm at work, if I'm at work, I like my toes, I'll wear the boots. But otherwise, yeah. yeah. Regular day. Sneakers. Pizza or barbecue? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> barbecue pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Combination. Wow. Stumper. Go barbecue. Go I go barbecue. I'm going to go barbecue. Barbecue. Yeah. Because there's more to a variety. Yeah. You cook dinner or wash the dishes? Oh, I'm definitely I guess I gotta wash the dishes because I don't know how to cook. I'm cooking because I make a big mess. I make, I make a bit, I use every dish oh, yeah, we sure. own when I cook. Uh, I don't mind doing the dishes though. I, I, I like spraying with stuff with water. water. You were asking which would you rather do? Yeah, I guess I'd rather. Problem either way, but I'd rather go and not do the dishes. Yeah. Which one? I, I didn't hear Tom's answer. Would you rather cook or do the dishes? Dishes, because I can't cook. Have you ever done the dishes? Yes. Okay. Where do you go, Ronnie? Dishes. Dishes? You know why? Because nobody else wants to do them, so there's nobody around to bother you as you do them. That is quiet time. That's true. And you don't have a dishwasher. Anybody comes near you and it's just, hey, give me a hand with this, and no. they're gone. No, no. <laughs> Unless you have people that will come near you. Out of the blue, as you're doing this, you're like, oh. Here's more. <laughs> and throw a bowl on the cup in there. You're all done. Right, son? You got, you got one fork left, and all of a sudden, there's just a box full of dishes that were hiding under somebody's bed. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Re- would you rather read minds or see into the future? Mm. Read minds. I want to see the future. No, no, I don't. You don't. I don't. I don't want to see you don't. Do you really want to read mine? I don't want to read mine. I don't want either of these. You can already assume some people don't like you, so whatever you hear them say, so be it. All right. You don't want to see that. I would see the future, play with the stock market, and end world hunger. Boom. Win. I would say read minds because I already know the future. And that is God is coming. Amen. My man. That's all that matters. I see where he at. Okay. Watch a movie or read a book? <laughs> Just kiss him this time. Watch a movie. Watch a movie or read a book. I would love to say read a book. But man. You'd be nice. It's to watch a movie. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't read book. I just don't read like I used to. I watch a movie about a book. Watch a movie. <laughs> watch a movie based on a book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> movie. Okay. Cats or dogs? Dogs. dogs? dogs. You say cats, you're out of here. Yeah, you're not, yeah. Man, they're kicking everybody out of the show. <laughs> you know what? You're pun- the person. If you say cats, your punishment is we're going to get you a cat. Yeah, I have a Roomba. <laughs> Roomba. Yeah, it's so much easier to have something else clean up after you instead of you cleaning up after it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Unless it poops on the carpet. And, and then the Roomba the runs over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Look at my artwork. It's time to move. <laughs> if that happens, it's time to move. Would you rather go fishing or go golfing? Uh, fishing. Neither. Uh, golfing. Uh, see, I'm torn because I like bowls. I've never golfed. I might enjoy it. I might not. It's fishing's pretty boring. You hit a ball and you gotta go chase it. If there's a golf cart, if, there, if there's a golf cart on yeah. a nice day, a golf cart and a cooler, and there might be a cooler and a golf cart, and if it's seventy degrees, sixty-eight and, degrees, and okay. a cigar. Mm. I've been inside a golf. <laughs> he Thirty did. cans of but, soda, but you actually don't. Have, water. The funny thing is, Sean does not own a golf club. 
But he's got a golf bag, which is weird. That's a, that's a golf bag. I got a set of clubs. I have a set of clubs. I can golf, I can golf for years. Okay. All right, we should go sometime. Would you rather live in the country or live in the city? Country. City. city. I, not, I, I really would choose neither. I like being in town, but I was in, in the country for so long that I think I'd rather have a change. Go to city. Okay. Final one, would you rather be respected or be feared? Respected. respected. I know where I'm at. That's good, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I, I know I'm not feared by anybody. I don't think I'll ever be either, but I'd say respected. I'd definitely would say respected. I do have to add one more because somebody yeah. was texting me and whining that we didn't ask his question. Would you read a book or have an argument with your spouse? Read a book. Read a book. Yeah, read a book. I, I, I would get one choice of this. Yeah, read a book. book. <laughs> That's why. It could pretty much be anything or have an argument with your spouse, and I'd rather read a book. Or, or do the anything. Yeah, the other thing. The other thing. Yeah. Hey, you want to go shark diving without a shark suit? Yes. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, shark. Lava Where surfing. Are we swimming then? No. Lava surfing. <laughs> Lava surfing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to chew on this bag of nuts and bolts? <laughs> yes. Yep. Let's do it. A little base <laughs> jumping without a <laughs> Yep. Give me the old jam sport. Let's do this. <laughs> Get a sheet. Jump off. Yeah. Oh, give me the trapper keeper. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. Lee, Lisa Lisa isn't that isn't that big, but she's intimidating. I yeah. can't believe that. I, for, for like five four, man, she knows how to she knows how to jab. I the look when she's ready to go. And she just oh, yeah. looks at you and I'm like uh-huh. I was like, Dave, you gotta go, yep. man. You gotta go. Yeah, go. run, run, run. I'm talking to you. Run. Bye. Pick <laughs> him up, start pushing for you. <laughs> Let me yeah. help you. Uh would you rather Eat a wonderful steak and potato dinner, or would you go, rather go to McDonald's and eat a garbage Happy Meal? Hmm, that's a tough one. I'm not really a steak, a steak guy, but I definitely don't want the freaking McDonald's. I don't want that. I don't want the processed food. Yeah, I, don't yeah, want the, I want the food that takes the time and the love. To, the, the you want something with some depth, some substance, some time, substance. some prep time, something that's marinated. Yeah, right? We're gone. I don't like steak either, but it's the only thing I can think of. Salmon. 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 Nice salmon dinner. Yeah. Salmon Marinated. Salmon. Hot dogs. You can eat now. Do you need another two weeks off? Yeah. <laughs> you think that's what he's trying to do. But yeah, could you, would you rather have a nice salmon steak that's been marinated and sitting for a while and perfectly charred and grilled? You know, a little bit of rice. On a wood plank. Oh, cedar plank. Yeah, a little, bit of, maple. Ra- maple, yeah, good. a little yeah. bit of rice on the side, some big, crispy broccoli, Let it fresh, fresh, fresh asparagus, fresh yeah. asparagus. Yeah. Or you go to McDonald's and get something in a ra- in a wrapper that even the squirrels won't eat. No, oh, it won't burn up. That sounds yeah. so good. Yeah. Fifty years still looks exactly. The yes, same. Yeah. that's the beauty. That's the beauty. So what I think what we're trying to get to is the things that you don't see sometimes are the good. I don't know what Tom's saying, but <laughs> what we're trying to get to tonight is the question that we've been talking about all week is why don't Christians have, why does it seem like Christians these days don't have any depth of character? Why does it seem like we're all fast food Christians that just look like food and act like food, but aren't really substantial? Mm. So, why don't we start with today's verse, which Tom's going to read right now. And it does not include hot dogs. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the word cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. John fourteen, sixteen through seventeen. Um and 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 it's a great topic to becoming back to from being off two weeks because it's a topic that uh, before I was gone that last week I preached about in church about the Holy Spirit and 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 it's 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 the part of the Trinity that's with us right now here on earth the part of the Trinity that is our helper the one that that gets us through the day the one that's that's that we worship you know and 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 when these guys told me that they were talking about this it really it, it was really something else because at the the whole content of, of what of what they're going to discuss today, what we're going to discuss today, is something that 
I find to be very important. It's something that I think that is missing in today's Christian life is that relationship with the Holy Spirit. I think it's missing. I think we focus a lot of times on working on relationship with Jesus, which is very, very important, you know, but a lot of times we forget that the Holy Spirit is the one that's here on earth, I guess. So just to set up this topic a little bit, you know, we don't have all the answers for this, but we want to pose the question, and we're willing to take as many episodes as it takes uh, in this American cheese <laughs> segment uh, series that we're doing, um, to just pose the question of, like, the world sees Christians, and I want to say American evangelical Christians, but, but Christians in general. We've all heard it, we've all seen it, we've all, you know, heard the jokes, and we've all seen what mainstream popular culture is saying about us, is that Christianity seems to become be <clears throat> viewed as manufactured, cheap, you know, flimsy, and what are what could we do to change that? And why is it? And so, you know, this week what we have is, I mean, we all struggle with this. I mean, we're on we're all on the same journey. And, and in this whole week of thinking about this topic and getting ready for this show, you know, we want to make sure that we're not coming across as judgmental because we're struggling with the same thing, um, you know, to improve the depth of character that's within us. Because we know that God is real and we know that our relationship with him is real. But are we really seeking the spirit in our daily lives? Are we really seeking for true worship? So, uh, you know, we wrote down some issues um, that we want to address. And one of the things that uh, we want to address about our culture uh, and first, I want to quote the Holy Post uh, podcast. They said, uh, I was listening to one earlier this week that said, we develop Christian kids to stay in the pipeline of Christian culture and church. Unfortunately, they can't survive outside of that, and we don't know how to train them to do so. We focus on numbers and goals and human relationships, but not necessarily on Christian service. So we're focusing on what should be the byproduct of what, you know, we should be focusing on Christian service living with the Spirit, developing character, Christian character. And the byproduct of that should be numbers and goals and human relationships, but instead we're, we're focusing on the wrong part of that. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to point out today that we see is like our whole Christian evangelical culture points towards these like manufactured moments, such as like teen church camp, if you've ever been to that. I know I went to a few when I was a kid. You know, it's like, it's like, you go to this moment of like, we know what it's going to do. It's going to like break you down, build you up. You're going to have this big moment of, you know, confession and, and altar time and the worship services and all that stuff. But it's like some big moment that you go to. And if you go to a church that has, you know, uh, the, you know, traditional worship and traditional service, that's another moment that you're going to. Um, but we're, we, we watch movies and we listen to Christian music that, you know, we're trying to get to that moment of worship, but we're not really doing it in our daily lives. You know? But I'll jump in, because I actually have a lot I want to say on this. But um, we, we've had this conversation before that we're so busy looking for the big miracles. We all want to raise Lazarus from the dead, but we don't look at the small opportunity that God gives us every day. Right. When we first started this, and we talked about this in the meeting, Tom over there, you guys kept seeing the same guy at Wawa in Limerick. I remember you guys said, oh, I saw this guy there, and I felt like I should stop, and I kept asking, well, why didn't you stop? Mm -hmm. Like, those are the small moments we forget. Like, we get these fixes on Sunday morning that make yeah. us feel good, and then we go to camp. I didn't go to camp, but I'm not discrediting what camp can do, but a lot of folks use that as, a, like, well, I don't feel like I'm complete, so they go to camp, and instead of taking that experience and yeah. expanding, because like, when I went to team camp a couple years ago with Andres, that expanded my faith. That brought more joy to my life. That made me do things differently. It yeah, changed but, me. You know, I thought about you, Sean, this week when I was uh, processing some of this information. You didn't necessarily grow up in this pipeline, though, did you? No. I mean, so, I, was, I walked away from the Catholic Church at 16. Right. So you weren't necessarily in the evangelical pipeline. No, I never was. And so I was thinking about that. You might have some hit some of these experiences differently, where you're you're getting a lot of your information from the Bible, not from Christian culture, and from you know these experiences you have. The Bible tells us to to go and reach people, go and teach people, and I see you doing that a lot. But like the Christian pipeline is teaching us to like stay in church, 
Go to the churchy stuff. Be part of the church. Go to the team. Go to the kids group. Go to the team group. Go to the team camp. When you get older, go to a Christian college. When you get out of that, marry somebody who's Christian, which I think you should do. And you know, raise your kids to go to children's church and you know, team program. It's like like repetitive. Where what you're saying about not talking to the guy on the street, I don't know that our Christian culture teaches us how to do that stuff. We become complacent. Right. We show up on Sunday morning. But how often do you bring somebody who's broken on a Sunday morning? Because this is where they belong. Yeah. They belong in the church on a Sunday morning. We don't belong in the church on a Sunday morning. Yes, we should come for fellowship. Yes, we we should be there for worship and all that. But it's not just, it's not for us. We've already been saved. We're already, we know where we're headed. It's our job to go bring in the lost and the broken. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And we've 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 dulled this whole process down to the fact that we've we've it's a boys club. Church is a boys club anymore. Mm-hmm. We, and we wait for these big things to happen because you're getting your, your fill every Sunday morning. That's not what it's about. You should be taking that word all week with you. There is something there for you every single week. God would not put it on Pastor Pete every Sunday to bring a message. If he didn't have some for everybody in that room, because that's how God works. But we don't seek it. We all stand up and raise our hands and, you know, we all clap and we we cheer. And and that's great. You're feeling the spirit. But once that music's over, once you walk out that door, where's the spirit then? Why are we not seeking the spirit all week long? Taking that information forward. Kemp, I know Tom is going to take whatever he got at camp this week. And I know for a fact Tom is going to carry the spirit with him and do better things because of that. But the problem is... And this is just me, again, being an outside person coming into it and seeing it from this angle, because I was not part of it. And again, I'm not trying to judge people. I understand that's what you, you think, but we need to break those. I mean, that's why Christ came. He came to break the culture. He came to break the norms. I think we're settled into some norms, and we just need to spread out and do what we're supposed to do and stop worrying about all the little things that we just do. Well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I want to be judgmental about it, and I want to be upset about it. And I want to be convicting about it. And I want to be angry about it. But the only person I want to be angry at, convicting at, is me. Because, you know, I I prep for a topic like this and I go, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? You know, just being judgmental. <laughs> you know, driving by people on the street and going, I wish somebody would do something for that person. You know, I, I, I realize that, you know, I give myself a hard time. And that I probably do more than I realize. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't a lot of weeks walk out of church and say, that was a great service. Where can I, where can I bring that service to? Where can I bring that message to? Who can I go reach based on what I just heard? I go, man, that was a great service. I feel full. <laughs> you know, it's like, it stops. You know, it's. I think as, as Americans, we can tend to be a little selfish about that stuff. Like you said, you go to a service and it's, what can I get out of this? You know, um, where I see uh, that I think what the Spirit wants us to do is I want to be full so I can I can give up myself to other people. I think a lot of the uh, the problem here is that we live in in an information society, right? So so when um, we're we're almost informational Christians. So when we go to the um, even if I go up here, still the same Bible, she lured me. Um, even even when you go to to like into church, right? When you come to church, what what, what do you what do you hear? What do you go to church for? Do you go to church so you can hear a good sermon? Do you, 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 you go to church so you can learn and, and get informed and know more about the word, right? Or you go or do you go to church to have the church and what's going on inside of that building form you and form the way you live? You see, I think a lot of times we go into these camps. With, with, oh, it's a camp, it's going to be so much fun, I can't wait to learn everything, right? Well, well me and Claire did actually do something differently this time, right? Because I remember somebody told me, don't expect too much from this camp, right? And I told this person, well, that's a lost cause if I go into it not to expect that much. I'm already going into it not because Dr. Manley is there. I'm going into it because I'm there to grow relationships with other people. That in itself is going to be forming me, right? But but I think a lot of times we go into the Bible to learn instead of having the living word form us. There's a big difference in reading the word as, as information instead of formational. 
There's a big difference in that. And I think as Christians, we're always looking for information instead of letting the word move us and form us. I'm going to take you back to what you said a minute ago. Why do we go to church? And to be completely honest with you, I think we go to church because that's what we do. Part of that pipeline we're up I, I think it's because that's for most of us and for where I have been most of my Christian life is I go to church because that's what I'm supposed to do. I, I think one of the problems is that people look at the word worship as in the first part of the show right. uh, or, or the service. I, for some reason, and Claire calls me this, and calls me out. I call it the show now. Ever since I, I've been here, I call Sundays the show. But anyway, so, so you made it to the show. I read an interesting article uh, yesterday. Up. Yeah, up. I, I read an interesting <laughs> article yesterday about a pastor who wanted to show their congregation what true worship is about. Right? Because if worship is about the singing, then you're only worshiping 10 minutes a week. Right? Or maybe if you turn the radio on, right? And that's not what worship is about. So he actually, for like two months, took out the whole worship side of like all the music section. And for that 10 minutes, he told his congregation, find a way to worship God. Figure out how to worship God, you know? And, and, and I think once we figure out, for me, I go to church for two things. To worship and to fellowship, right? So I'm already going into the church knowing that I'm going to come out with something out of it, regardless what the Holy Spirit talks through, either Pastor Sean or Pastor Pete. I'm already going in with, it doesn't matter what they're going to teach me today. I'm going to go to worship my God. And the other thing, when you're worshiping your God, we should worship in all glory, meaning like if he's actually right there in front of you, I mean, he really is, right? And that's how, when I'm in church, it's just me and God. I don't even know there's people around me. I just lose myself in the worship of my God. But we hear you. You hear me. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. But, but you're right. A lot of people just come to church just to, hey, I went to church on Sunday. I go to church every Sunday. That's just what I do. Just check the, yeah. check the box. Yeah, my dad used to always tell me when I was little, he said, you know, you don't go to, a, to, a, to an airport and become a plane. You don't go into a mechanic and become a car, right? That's not how it works. You don't go into church and become a new Christian. You know, it's not by works, right? That's one of the reasons why I stopped going to church, because I was going to church because I had to. Right. Because I had to. And then when I didn't have to go, and it was totally up to me, I stopped going. And now that, and when I made my way back, like I said, the big reason for me making my way back was the loss of my mom. And once I got back and saw, like, Especially with this church. Once you saw how it wasn't, when I got here, it wasn't what it is today. Yeah. But it was still a sense of family and a sense of warmth and a sense of, you know, your, your, you fellowshipping here is going to mean something right. in the future. And you're going to start laying down roots. And, and, that's, and that's pretty much what it's, what it's become. Like, it's grown. It's like, we're doing this. We have basketball things. We try and do, we try and do so much. And, Coming back was what, like you said, like that whole pipeline upbringing. Like we went because we had to, and we went like, like you said, like each, like the camps and the, all that. Each one is almost like its own little rites of passage to get to the next thing, mm-hmm. and and that's and that's what it was. Well, and, it's like we, almost like we need a, a fill up, right? And that's what Sean was saying the other night. Is you know we we get to the part where we start feeling like we're empty and that we're you know like like depressed yeah, yeah. and not doing because I think that's the Holy Spirit saying where are you what are you doing why aren't you you know and so we say okay I need a fill up I'm gonna go to a camp or I'm gonna need a fill up I'm gonna go to Sunday service or I need a fill up I'm gonna read a book it's you know watch God's not three dead don't do it if you're at home and you haven't seen it don't watch God's not three dead God's not, not dead, dead three. three whatever it is don't watch it and and the beautiful thing about what you're saying though seriously is that this fill up that you speak of we should really be doing every single day. Right. Every right. day. I, I, it's, it's every day. Just like if you're eating breakfast in the morning. It should be yeah. a constant thing. God, yeah. but this is, but that's what, I mean, I think that's what Sean was getting at, though, is like, this is God's economy, like we've talked about so many times in the past. The more you give, the more you get. And so if you're just trying to fill yourself up with this stuff, you're going to end up being empty. But if you're giving, if you're working, if you're truly living with the Spirit, giving up yourself, you are going to be... Have the depth of character, not the processed garbage. What are, I, I'm going to try to answer, uh, talk about Reverend Kelly Beecher's question here in a second. In this, um, so, like, 
we've been talking here. The whole point is, God walked the earth. He created it. Jesus came to save it. The Spirit is here to guide it. Right. So why are we not living that out every day? We've been given an example. We've been given a playlist. We've been given an instruction manual. Right. We have it. We all have it in our homes. Some of us have two or three of them. Tom's got about 652 of them. <laughs> I just heard Which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying. <clears throat> but everybody has an instruction manual. We have the guide. Why are we not living that out? We have a guider. We have a, a guidance in us every day. The Spirit fill, fills us every day. Every time you make a decision, the Spirit has guided you one way or the other. And here's the thing. If we're not living it out, and this is Pastor uh, Kelly Beecher's question is, do your neighbors know your faith? Do your co-workers know your faith? Are you living that out? And that's where, if we were living that out every day, if we were living out our faith, and that's what I want to talk about next week, you wouldn't need many Phillips. Right. Because you'd be pouring right. out, and God's going to be constantly pouring back into you. So you wouldn't need to go get these little mini, oh, I need to go to camp. I need to go to camp. Because that's, and again, so I, I'm not putting, you know, I know you went because this is new, for, and it's awesome, I love camps. But a lot of folks go, I need to go to camp. You need to go to camp because you want living up your Christianity on a daily basis. Yeah, and it's, it's all about, and that's what we said, none of those things are really wrong. No. None of those things are bad. You know, but it's, it's why are you doing that? You know, that is the, why are you going to be around other Christians? Is it because that's that's your pipeline and that's where you hang out and that's all you know? Or is it because you're trying to, to learn something, to be around, to be refreshed so that you can go out and work? You know, and most of us, we go home and we go back to our other life. Not that we're being duplicitous, but we go back to the normal, you know, to go back to the, the everyday. So one of the things that we wanted to bring up was... Um, <coughs> When it comes to why are Christians, you know, why, why does the world see us as shallow? Um, because I don't think any of us, um, we, all, we all agree that one of the reasons is lack of true time spent in the Word of God. You know, and what are we filling our heads with if we're not filling our heads with the Word of God every day? You know, nonsense. Where are we get? Where are we getting our gospel? <clears throat> what are we truly seeking in life? If we're not seeking the word every single day, if we're not yeah. seeking that relationship every day. What are we seeking? So, and the other thing was like, where are we, where do we get the gospel that we know? We all know some, you know, at least some depth of gospel, some depth of, you know, the Bible, the Word of God. Are we getting it from quiet time, digesting God's word on our own, and and, and seeking and 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 searching for what does this mean to me? What does this mean? What is God trying to teach me through this? Or are we getting God's word like a game of telephone? We're hearing it from a guy who read a book about a thing that had to do with the Bible. You know, are we getting it through other people's interpretations? Are we getting it through a Hollywood movie? Are we getting it through a magazine article? Are we getting it through a song? Where are we actually getting God's word from if we won't go to God's word? I mean, it's, it, it truly is the only way God is going to speak to you is through his living word. That's how he speaks through us, through his living word. I can't believe I don't have a Bible up here. Like this. You, know, you got but, 600 and something. Probably. 52. Yeah, let me know. 52. But, but I just, I just, you know, well, it's, go ahead. Just, I was going to say, just for future reference, Sarah, make sure we have Bibles or something. You know, I, I know I just didn't have one in front of me. To, I, I didn't want to walk off. Shame on you. But yeah, that's okay. Definitely shame on me. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, I mean, we could all do better with this, but there, Absolutely. The, the answer to that is simple. Spend time in the Word of God. You know, it's... But uh, one one of the things I, I, I'd be remiss if we didn't get to is the oversaturation of everything else in our lives. Mm -hmm. Of the, you know, not to be the old guy, but the oversaturation of technology, information, and outside stuff. You know, last night we went out for a <clears> ride <throat> in the car, and Allison, you know, my oldest daughter, is in the back seat on her phone. And I'm like, dude, Get off your phone. We're out for a ride in the country. Like, this is not a time to be on the phone. This is time to look out the window. Right. And, you know, and she's a really good kid about it. If you, As soon as you say that, she puts the phone away. And I start to be convicted because I'm like, how many times am I, in a quiet moment, not on my phone? Not on a piece of technology. Not watching TV. Not, you know, trying to just fill up the quiet. I know, I know, I know but, but see, you have, you have years on you. You have experience. And you don't want her... 
the missed moments that you may have missed. With yeah, I know, but I, I get that. I get what you're saying, like, with that. But at the same time, I'm still guilty of it. I don't, I have gotten to the point where quiet is not, a, it's not like a healthy part of my life. I mean, the quiet, we all need to get to a point where quiet is part of our lives. Because I think, I think one of the ways that Satan will attack you is just by never allowing you to let your brain rest and heal and meditate can you give me the definition of quiet, though? Uh, so, so, so I'll give you the definition of quiet, because and I'm glad you brought that up, because exactly what we're at in spiritual formation in school right now, that silence that he speaks of is the exact definition that you think of. It's, it's going somewhere by yourself without this and just in complete silence and, and really, really just sometimes God speaks to us. But we don't hear because we don't give him that silence that he's talking about. Part of my prayer now after I pray is I sit there in silence for a little bit and just wait and just meditate. And, 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 and it's never, and, and here, the reason I bring it up, and my wife's not watching because she's here, it's something I've never done. I never really understood meditation. I'm like, what's meditation? Isn't that like prayer? Like what, you know, it's but it, it's in... And, and I've been I've been utilizing it. I did it for a half hour today again. I've been utilizing it every day, and it's really transforming. It feels like you just woke up from a nice. Nap. It's refreshing, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just exactly what it is. Just silence. Well, I'm gonna try that tonight. That silence that you speak of, because every night after KJ said, you know, after we say our prayers and she goes to bed, I usually sit there. And like you said, I'm filling up that silent time. With my phone. Yeah. Tonight, I mm -hmm. promise, I yeah. will sit there, even if it's for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, with nothing there, just the thing so going you, and just silence. Not going to be on your phone. I, you, you know, I'm going to text you and find out if you're on your phone. Okay. I'll, I'll take my watch off. <laughs> Don't text him back. I'm going to take my watch off. I'm gonna He's like, no, I'm meditating. I'm going to leave everything. I'm going to leave everything. I'm no, going to take everything out of the room. Seriously, though, and, and we should probably start thinking about wrapping up soon. Pushing this out to like seventeen episodes of the series, but I, I, I go ahead. No, about the silence though, it has become. We allow ourselves to become so multitask oriented that even in a moment of silence, your brain is still trying to interrupt the silence. And I, I want to admit to something and feel terrible. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to tell you how bad of a person I am right before we close out the show. How about that? I'll tease that a little. Um, but even in a moment of silence, it is so hard to like meditate. Even when you're reading the Bible, it's so hard to meditate on what you're reading and not li pushing those those thoughts outside. What'd you, what'd you no, think? it's just everything you're saying is so true, man. It's because it's what I'm learning. It's so true, man. And and it's like everything else. Practice makes perfect, right? So a lot of times it's hard to push those thoughts up, but the more you try to do it, the the better you do get it. But what I wanted to say real quick is is what silence does. As we just talked about the silence after prayer, but what silence does in life is it makes you present, right? right? So when you're by yourself and you're silent, you feel the presence of God. When I'm talking to Dave and I'm silent, I'm present in Dave's life, listening to what he's saying. What? A lot of times what Dave said is we start getting these thoughts or we start thinking of what we want to say. When that happens, we really got to try to train ourselves to be like, just shut it down. It's not that important. What he's saying is important. Absolutely. Yep. I'm, I'm like the worst person, right? I, I think I, oh, I think man, we all I'm, are. I'm terrible. I'm terrible about you know. Oh oh, I want to make sure, and it, it doesn't come from a place of evil, right? It's just like oh, I want to no. make sure that before I forget, yeah. I want to say this because we want to be nice. Yeah, we want to help people, right? But really, to truly help people, you got to really let them let you let let you know what exactly is wrong. And if we try to think of a solution while they're talking, we're not listening to the complete problem. I have a, just a thought here when we were talking about the silence and stuff and. Uh, Sarah, so Christians put this. Amen, Lois. Amen. Uh, Sarah Sorry. put the scripture in, and we talked about it the other night, and I, I love it, but it didn't make sense. Like it did, mm -hmm. but it makes it real. Uh, it, uh, let me get to it. Yeah, so First Kings nineteen, that's so eleven to thirteen. The Lord, the Lord said, "Go and stand on the mountains in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by." Mm -hmm. The great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, and this is the part I want, because it just it hit me when you guys were talking. 
After the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled up, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? The world, the enemy, will scream. And it will throw things in your face and will do everything it can to distract you and take away from what you're doing. But when you are silent, when you search for and seek the Lord, you will hear the Spirit. The Spirit's not going to yell. The Spirit's not going to scream in your face. The Spirit's not a drill sergeant. The Spirit is going to come calmly, whispering. Because that's when you know you're doing what God is calling you to do. He's not going to scream in your face. He's not going to belittle you. He's not going to berate you. He's not going to cause fire and earthquake. And he's going to whisper and give you peace and calmness. And that's what we need to see on a daily basis. Listen, it, sounds, it really does sound bogus. It, the whole concept sounds bogus. And it always has. But just, I, I'm excited for you, my brother, to talk to you tomorrow and find out how tonight went for you. Because it really is important for all of us to get in the habit of doing that. I mean, with that that scripture you just read, it's basically it's in, it's, 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 basi- it's basically saying like through all the noise, like after the storm, all that stuff that happened when it was all over with, and you do hear that voice. It's like where where did you come from? I've been here all along. Amen. Amen. Right along. beside you the whole time. Been Amen. The whole time. Thank you, Jesus. Just need to see for it. It's amazing. All right, guys. Um, I mean, it's usually a wrap up, but I think we wrapped it. <laughs> yeah, I think we got a pretty. I mean, I, I, you I, read a verse. We, 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 oh, go ahead. Man. Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to find something. Uh, I'm so glad you read that verse um, because uh, Sarah put that in there. Yeah, and it was beautiful the other day. It just didn't make sense. It just clicked as you guys were talking about silence. So, when I was prepping for the show the other day, we talked about silence and meditation, and we talked about uh, outside thoughts coming in. Um, I wanted to read First Kings uh, because it had been a while since I read First Kings, and I wanted to get the background for that verse because there was a lot that I'd forgotten about. But I was having the hardest time reading the Bible and keeping outside thoughts from pushing in. You know, you're like reading something, and you're like, ah, oh, I really wasn't paying attention. I got to go back read that yep. again. So I was having like the hardest time reading through First Kings the other day, and <clears throat> I was reading and reading, and I was uh, in chapter seventeen. Um. And I was just reading through chapter 17, and I was like, man, I am having, like, I was just like, all these outside thoughts kept coming in. I was like, man, I got to read that again. Man, I got to read that again. And finally, I got, like, through chapter 17, and I was like, I didn't catch, like, I didn't retain anything that I just read. And basically, um, there was one point where I went back because I didn't retain what I just read. And I want to read to you what I glazed over because there was outside thoughts pushing in. Then Elijah stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came back to him again, and he revived. Can I ask you a question? What the hell was so important that I didn't read that the first time? The first few times. I read through that, and it didn't sink in. And I read through that, and it didn't sink in because I thought I had another... Something in my life that was more important that I was trying to inter- in- intrude. I've been in this pipeline so long that, that these words, even though I believe them, I'm not letting them affect me, and that is wrong. Amen. I read about Elijah, who I believe in, reviving a child. I believe that miracle happened, and I was too obsessed with other outside influences that day to, to like let that hit me. We need to get to a point where we are allowing the Holy Spirit to work in us, no matter what else we have going on. That's all I wanted to say. I wanted to end with how bad I am, (laughs) so you can understand that I'm not trying to be judgmental. I think we all need to come back to a place of real revival. That's not a service. It's it's a mindset. It's a heart set of us going like... We have to set our hearts to true worship every day. Every day. Sunday. Yep. That's what Carrie Willis said. It doesn't matter how many chapters you read a day. How many are you... Living out. You know, get to he said, I read the Bible to a point where Jesus whacks me over the head and I just need to meditate on that for a little while, man. We're we're not in a contest. Who can So how fast you can get through it is yeah. what actually affects your life and what you yep. can bring to somebody else because that's what we're called for. It's 
Yeah, I mean, we could do this. All I mean, we it's, it's a great topic. Six hours. But, such a good topic. Um, you know, it's such a good topic. Uh, guys, I, I apologize. I meant to mention this at the beginning. Uh, Me too. From now on going forward, we're going to ask you to post all prayer requests throughout the show. I'll write them down. Uh, that way it takes a little less time uh, as we come to this part. But I am going to go ahead and go to prayer. Please post your prayer requests. We will keep them down. I will pray from the week. And I did catch which ones came up. So uh, let us pray. Father God. Oh, Father. Whew. Man. We just celebrated fathers this week, Lord, and we need to celebrate you every day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We know that you poured your love, your compassion, you poured everything out into us. And we are too busy with the things that are shiny, that catch our attention. And we overlook all the amazing things you put in our lives. All of us at this table right now are fathers. There is no better miracle, no better gift you've given me than the love of my children. Father, love is the greatest gift you ever created. Let us not overlook it. Let us seek it with everything that we are. So far this week, we just want to thank you for everything that you are doing in this house of worship, in your home here in Roarsburg. Well, because there are some amazing things going on. Amen. Amen. Lord, it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes how effective you are when we are willing to follow you. You just keep pouring out blessings that we can never understand. Lord, like the topic, there are spirits against us because we know what we need to do, but we forget how to do it. Everything else catches our attention. Some things just tend to be more important than you, Lord. Break that chain, Lord. That is not what we want. That's not what your people want. We have a direct line, a direct communication, a direct relationship with you, Lord. Let us remember that and only that. We don't need the world. We don't need the fancy things, the things that are in your face. We just need that quiet that is you. Lord, for Bill, working for his job, Lord, being that, you know the situation, you know where it needs to be for Bill, Lord, it is your will. Let it be done, Lord. Uh, Lord, for the bandages, you know their situation, Lord. You know where they're at. Continue to work on that, Lord. Not everything's an easy process because we do have those outside influences. Lord, but speak into that. Open the hearts in that situation, Lord. To the family of Mike Rowan, Lord, we know he's with you. Let that be peace into his family after a long battle. Let them find silence and solitude in you, Lord. Father, embrace them. Hold them. <coughs> Just show them all the love you have for them, Lord. Lord, for Ralph, uh, for the issues he's dealing with currently. Let them find the right doctors, the right diagnosis, the right treatments, Lord, because we know that you are the great healing physician, but we also know that you appoint people on earth to do the jobs that you do. People are trained to do what you've asked of them. Doctors and nurses are no different, Lord. So let whatever healthcare professionals he sees listen to you and find the right answers, Lord. Father. As we finally find a way to celebrate for you. Long time coming. We are free every single day in you. That's right. You've given us freedom. No one better than the other. No one more loved than the other. No more favoritism. Lord, there are seven plus billion people on this planet. In your heart, Aches for each and every one each of those souls. Every single one. Every single one because your love is that big. 
There isn't an ocean big enough to contain it. There isn't a universe big enough to contain your love. Thank you, Jesus. But just... You walked this earth and deemed it good. Yes. When it went sideways, you still thought it could, so you sent your son to save what was good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And when that wasn't enough, you sent your spirit to guide us to you. Glory to God. So, Lord, let us follow the one from you and not the one from this place. Hmm. We don't need to raise the dead, Lord. That's your job. If you do it, if you ask it, I will do it. But Father, that belongs to you. Take every heart of stone, every heart that's guarded itself from you, and shatter that case and shatter that wall, destroy it, crash it, burn it. Whatever you've got to do, Lord, remind us that you our love. Everything you do is to show your love to us. Mm -hmm. So in kind, let us be a reflection of that love back to you. We can't reach that level, but let us shine it as far and as bright as we can back to you, Lord. As much as we can take, fill us up with that, Lord. And let us shine that in the world. Let us light up the dark places. Let us find the lost and the broken. We are brothers and sisters, one body in Christ, no one better than the other. But a body can't move if a heart is broken. That's right. So Lord, let us work together. Mm -hmm. Let us come together. Let us be one in you. Yes. <clears throat> so we can move. We tell a mountain to go throw itself in the ocean. It goes to the ocean. Lord, we love you. Open our hearts and minds to truly seek you every single moment of every day. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Got a final thought for you guys. That was a good prayer, Sean. That, that, was, that was a great prayer, Sean. Thank you for that. That's all the spirit. Those, yeah, spirit. I hear that. It started a week when we didn't get you. Uh, children's love. Amazing. <laughs> all right. So I got your, your final thought. And it's, it was a little something like this. Amen. Mm -hmm. You all right, Tom? Yeah, it's just got it so good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. <laughs> Find the Holy Spirit in the quiet wind on a daily basis. We're not made for the processed cheese. We're made for the real stuff. And that takes a while. Yep. Yep. It does. So, if you watch us, I don't need to ask if we made you laugh, because we definitely did. If you stuck around for the prayer, you definitely got a tear or two. So, we definitely made you cry. So, we hope that you we want you to hit the like button and share it and all that good stuff when it comes to the Facebook page. You can also find us on wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. That's your Spotify, your podcast addict. Podcast addict. You can catch us on YouTube as well. YouTube is where Sarah does her best audio work. So I think you should look at that one if you need to because it sounds amazing. Because she really puts a lot of time and effort into it. Um, that was TikTok. Well, we need to be better at helping him help us. Mm -hmm. Help me help you. I'm sorry, son. I said that was an amazing job on TikTok, and you gotta watch them. Gotta watch the ones that's there. We have new content coming soon. We will help them. That is a promise. Another promise. So thank you for tuning in for episode. Thank, thank you for tuning in for episode sixty-six. It is episode 66. 
Hopefully we catch you back here next week for episode 67, where hopefully we have fans and we won't be baking in here. We love you. We love you guys. Love you all. Peace out.